Hello and welcome to Sparks. I'm Deirdre Brennan, the Executive Director of Rails, the Reaching Across Illinois Library System. And we created this podcast. This is uh, episode 33. So we've been doing this for a while now. We created this podcast to uh, in order to have conversations about library trends, uh, issues, uh, new ideas. And uh, so we're uh, you know, happy to be talking today about a really interesting project in Durand, Illinois. And uh, my guests today are Audra Hill, who is a school librarian in Durand, and Kelly Giovanni, who is the executive director of Durand Charm, as in Charm School, I guess, Charm Ing, and which is a local nonprofit that uh, whose mission is to promote Durand. And I guess you used to work in a library too at uh, Moline, I guess. So, welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So. Um, we uh, at Rails have a project, an initiative called My Library Is, and in support of that, we've been uh, uh, making grants out to uh, libraries that are doing innovative projects, and yours certainly fits that bill. So um, I watched your video, it was really fascinating uh, and fun. So this is, you know, a great opportunity to just, you know, talk about um, what's going on in Durand, which is that you have a library, but it's a shared library between the community and the school. Is that a accurate way of, of, of putting it? Mm -hmm. And so you did this grant, this video, this project to raise awareness of your library in the community. I, I, I understand because people didn't know you had a library. So um, why don't you, you know, just talk about um, what the, the uh, arrangement, the relationship is between you and the, the school and the village and the reciprocal borrowing agreement when it was formed, how it works, all that, just as a little background or, and any other kind of background that you want to give would be great. Durand Charm, like you said, is, is a nonprofit in Durand that supports our community and surrounding areas. Uh, we have several focus areas, one of them being education. Um, when I relocated to Durand last fall, I kept seeing signs that said public library with an arrow on the outskirts of town. And as I asked around, I kept getting the same response. Oh, I don't think we have a library or, well, we know about the school library. So I, I dug a little deeper and found that, yes, we do have um, a library. Uh, it was very active. 25, 30 years ago, it's bounced around and now it shares space with the school library. Um, it's, uh, you know, charming, very small, has uh, some really neat historical uh, volumes on the community, um, but it doesn't have much uh, relevant newer materials. So uh, we share space. We do have a reciprocal borrowing agreement, I found, um, that was activated about 25 years ago but it's barely used. So that's why we applied for this grant. We thought it would be perfect to help us get the word out about what we have, because we think it's quite special mm -hmm. um, that we can share materials. And um, also hopefully we're gonna reinstitute interlibrary loan and we've got big dreams for that. Um, but anyway, that's just kind of where we're at with it as we applied and we were lucky enough to receive funding. So now we're in the planning phase to make it all happen. That's great. So you are located inside the high school media center is that is that correct and you have multiple libraries there can you, you talk a little bit about what the sort of the organization is what the structure is so we are a very small town um, all in one district we are um, preschool through um, 12 in one building so we have um, three halls um, but all connected. So the whole district shares the one library that we share um, with the community library too. And, and, and are they all open at the same time or do you take turns being open or can anybody use all of the libraries? What's the, what's the setup there? So on a normal year without COVID <laughs> right. restrictions, um, yes, any community member can come into the office and sign in to come into the library at any time. 
the um, village librarian, there is one um, village librarian who has the village library or the school library open like after school hours. And she does um, two evenings a week and then Saturday mornings. And then you're open during school hours. The school yeah. library is open. Okay. What was your, uh, my library is a grant project then. What got you started? What gave you the idea? Well, it was kind of my life experience of seeing that sign and asking questions as a new resident and, you know, the community either not knowing that the library was there or what services they offered. So um, as I think you mentioned earlier, I, uh, before coming here, I was employed at the Moline Public Library. So I subscribed to Rails, new, the newsletter, and I, I saw the the write up about it in there and thought, oh my gosh, I've got the, the perfect project for that. We need some help getting the word out. So uh, when I met Audra um, and experienced her passion for literacy and, and for furthering you know, the library in Durand, um, we put our heads together and came up with a plan. Um, we wanted to get some relevant books um, for our students that we could get the word out in the community that we have. Um, and Audra has identified some of those that she can talk about on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then the rest of the, the funding is going to make some promotional materials. Um, already, we're going to be the featured article in our local newspaper next week, along with our summer reading program. Um, we we're also fortunate enough to get an ALA um, Transforming Communities grant to help uh, reinstate a summer reading program, which um, has been a little bit uh, lacking in, for several years, um, it, you know, just due to, to resources. Um, so that'll help us get that going and hopefully get some people to sign up for library cards and then you know just start that again passion for having a library in town that we can set as a foundation and grow from but maybe otter you want to share a little bit about those books and and why you had chosen that particular subject um yeah we're you know in northern illinois small town and we don't have a lot of diversity but we are starting to see um, our numbers grow a little bit and we didn't have those kinds of books in our library and with just the way our world is today with educating our kids differently about the things that are going on in the world. And it's really important for some of those little kids to see themselves in the books um, and to understand the different cultures and ethnicities and stuff. And we have really lagged in that. Um, and when I have you know, tried to ask for um, the administration to get on board with getting more money, like everything's getting cut and there hasn't been a lot more money. So it's been harder to be able to get that extra stuff and still keep up with the stuff that the kids really want to read. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just going through um, our inventory and looking at what we needed, that was a really great place to start with moving forward. So you made the YouTube video, right? Was that part of that was part of the application, I imagine? Yes. yes. So are you are you going to are you going to show that video to the public too? I mean, are you? What are your plans for that? Because it's quite clever. Actually. We already showed it to the school board. Yeah. And, and it was available, um, I think, for a brief time on our Facebook page, and yeah. uh, people thought it was fun. And once we roll out the summer reading program in more detail, I think we'll kind of connect to that. And when we push for library cards, it, it'll be part yep. of it because it was such a collaborative effort. You know, the schools yep. jumped in, there were several teachers and, and counselors and uh, students filming. So um, like Audra said, we're a very small community and everybody knows everybody else. So I, I do think it'll be fun for, to share that. And the mayor was in the video too. So that, so uh, I guess he's a fan, he's a supporter. That's great. Absolutely. He's the one um, actually that, that shared with me about the reciprocal borrowing program. Uh, he was Rand's chief of police for 36 years and then just finished his uh, term as mayor for four years. So served our community well for 40 years. And when I asked him if he wanted to be in the video, boy, he jumped on it. And <laughs> I, uh, I gave him a script, which he promptly threw out the window and just pulled it <laughs> from the heart, which was obviously even better. Yeah, that's so great. So what are your goals for the project? I mean, I assume, as you said, a, a summer reading project, a, a program, a library cards, uh, uh, books, but you, I'm sure you probably have specific goals and, and how will you evaluate whether you're 
uh, projects been a, has been a success or not? Well, the number one goal is to obviously have people know that there's a library, a village library in town, and that they can use it. Um, so if, if we can get the word out and, and when we ask, you know, do you know where the library is? Have you been to the library? If we get some yeses, then I, you know, we, we've done our job and done it well. Um, but beyond that, um, I, I do think our community will really rally behind the prospect of a library um, and just show the, the relevance and the value in it. And then we'll just take whatever steps the community wants to you know, add to it. We you know, add volumes, we can add space, uh, you know, whatever it is that the community needs. We uh, just did a community conversation about how to spend the, the ALA funds for summer reading. You know, should that go to STEM? type um, items to check out, you know, or, or do we see more needing more books and, you know, just kind of where they wanted to see that money go. And, you know, people are interested and they care and, and they want to make sure our children are educated and that our community has access to literacy materials as well. That's great. Did you have that on Zoom or did you have it in person or? How did it, was in, it was in person. We had a Zoom option, but okay. it was in person. And and what was the uh, what what were the results of that? Did it, did they did do you all come to a decision on on what to do with the ALA funds? I think we kind of left it more up to the schools and what they thought okay. that yeah. you know attract the children and that they would use over the summer. And I, Audrey, have you made a decision on? I know you talked about some things, but I'm not sure if. if... Um, I'm not sure that we have made a final decision. We've been pretty focused on the summer reading program, getting that going and um, getting the kids excited and interested in um, coming to that. And that's the first step to getting their parents in here to sign up for a village library card too. Great, that's great. And you'll be able to use the podcast as a, as a public relations tool too. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so you're gonna, are you, are you going to purchase a promotional materials, I think you said as well, as part of the grant? Yep. Right, we're, we're gonna have a flyer made that talks about the village library, what, you know, what reciprocal borrowing is. Um, our, one of our focuses will be on preschool aged children and their families. Um, I, is, I've never lived in a community that didn't have, you know, an active public library where there was story times and, you know, you go in and, and get books for your youngsters. Um, and they have that access, but I don't think they know it. So we're going to try to really get the word out to them. Um, and then the elementary aged families as well to let them know it's the entire family that can use that library for any age, you know, child that you have. Um, you know, just again, it's just all about talking, um, communicating, getting the word out. Um, so our local papers are wonderful. I know they'll help get the word out. We'll have that brochure. Um, part of the grant um, is funding. There's a small charge attached to library cards for the village library right now, just to cover the cost of them. But we're going to waive that for the first 20 families that, that come in to get cards as a, you know, just a promotional fund kind of thing. Uh, but then also obviously to remove any barrier that might be there, you know, for a family to, to get their cards. So we've got some fun planned. That sounds great. There's a librarian, a staff member at the village library. Yes, there is. She's um, been here about eight years, I believe. Is that Kelly? Was that what? I, I think so. Yeah. And um, she's a retired school librarian, correct? Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. She's done great. She's the one who started the summer reading program here. Uh, great. We didn't have one. And, um, and now it's just kind of morphing into without the presence of a, a funded public library, right, to do a summer reading program, the schools have really stepped up. Um, and said, hey, we'll help organize it, we'll help run it. We've got teachers coming in every week to read to the children so that they can see, you know, the students can see them during the summer, um, just those kinds of things. So, you know, to have that partnership it is really neat and, and kind of unique too, I think, because in the larger towns, it seems, you know, the, the kind of the libraries take over for summer reading and the, you know, the teachers are, are on break, but here they're, they're very much involved in it. That's great. And the summer is so important to, you know, keep kids reading. There's that summer slide that happens. So it's really great to see a collaborative effort to keep that from happening. So what else would you like to tell us about the projects? Any, any other uh, uh, goals or tidbits or um, any problems you've had in, you know, getting started that any advice for other small towns that want to do something like this? 
<laughs> I don't see any problems. I have about 25 um, books picked out and most of them are um, the um, really recent um, releases on just the how America um, looks at racism and tackling mm -hmm. that and um, a lot of the more social justice issues, even some in careers in social justice. A few of them um, will look at that because I think that's something our kids are going to start looking at as they move into the future. There's going to be a lot of more jobs and that kind of thing for them. So I think our kids will really enjoy the new books and they will get definitely get checked out a lot. And I guess I'd say from someone that's come from a, a larger town to a smaller town and um, you know, libraries are so important and they're so relevant no matter how big or how small they are. Um, and we, we have to toot our own horn some mm -hmm. and people, you kind of sometimes maybe get forgotten a little bit or it's just assumed that you're there and you'll always be there. Um, so we hope that you know, this kind of brings us to light again and, and reminds people that there is a library in Duran <laughs> and that they should use it. Exactly. I think, I think uh, that we do get taken for granted, which, you know, in some ways I think is a compliment. It's something that is like, you know, part of the fabric of a community or of, of life. But then again, when you need money, it's not good to be taken for granted. So, uh, you know, and libraries always need money. So good for you guys for finding a really great way to work together and, and you know, bring more library services to Durant. I really appreciate your talking with us today and uh, look forward to hearing more about the project as you, uh, as you move through it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for listening to Sparks today. Sparks is produced by the Reaching Across Illinois Library System. If you would like to learn more about the show or share your feedback on the topics discussed, please visit railslibraries.info forward slash sparks.